Hey there, everyone. I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince. And welcome to Season 6 of Mustang Prince Oro Reports. Man, 2017 sure was a crazy year, wasn't it? I mean, aside from my previous 5th season being really busy with about 93 blogs uploaded, as well as going on 3 vacations during the summer, there were lots of really outrageous things going on, like terrorism, weather destruction, as well as fires in my home state, and stuff that I really don't want to get myself involved with, like political and government nonsense. Not to mention the fact that the happiest place on earth, Disney, bought 20th Century Fox. And speaking of Disney, Thanks to a generous request from Sims 3 Forever Dude on YouTube, we're going to open Season 6 by going back to the 1940s to look into something really outrageous that Disney has made that a few folks may have liked, but tons have been really offended by. So, let's get started. Released on November 20th, 1946, the movie is Song of the South. Well then, let's get started. The movie follows a seven-year-old boy named Johnny who is visiting his grandmother's plantation for an extended stay. While there, Johnny befriends Uncle Remus, one of the workers on the plantation, and takes joy in hearing his stories about the adventures of Br'er Rabbit, Br'er Fox, and Br'er Bear. Johnny learns from the stories how to cope with the challenges he's experiencing living on the plantation. So, what are my thoughts? Well, it was okay. Nothing special, just okay. Let me explain. You see, as a little kid, I did know about the movie by watching the Disney sing-along song series, and reading a few illustrated books at school. Only problem is, I never really managed to watch the whole movie up until a few months ago when I managed to watch the movie on KimCartoon.net. And after watching it, it didn't really leave too much of an impact on me. Maybe if I did manage to watch the movie as a kid, it would have made me feel a bit different than I felt these days, but that doesn't mean I thought it was bad. But anyway, let's just move on to Mustang Notes. Walt Disney had wanted to produce a film based on the Uncle Remus stories for some time. It was not until 1939 that he began negotiating with the Harris family for film rights. And later in 1944, filming for Song of the South finally begun. The studio constructed a plantation set for the outdoor scenes in Phoenix, Arizona, and some other scenes were filmed in Hollywood. The film is mostly live action, but includes three segments, which all last a total of 25 minutes, and were later released as standalone television features. Some scenes were, would also feature a combination of live action with animation. Song of the South premiered in Atlanta in, in November 1946, and the remainder of its initial theater run was a financial success. However, since its release, Song of the South has remained a subject of controversy. Some critics have described the film's portrayal of African Americans as racist and offensive, pointing out the black vernacular, and some qualities as stereotypes. In addition, the plantation setting is sometimes criticized as idyllic and glorified. Because of this controversy, Disney has yet to release Song of the South on any home video format in the U.S. Some of the musical and animated sequences have been released throughout other means and the full film has seen 
home video distribution in other countries around the world. The cartoon characters from the film have continued to remain popular for decades, being featured in a variety of books, comics, and other media. In 1989, Disney opened a water flume ride at Disneyland based on Song of the South called Splash Mountain. With many different animals that came from the extinct America Sings that ran from 1976 to 1988. To me, that ride is a great ride, especially on a hot summer day. Though my first experience on Splash Mountain when I was 11 years old was okay, due to getting blinded by the camera and getting my pants wet from the final plunge. But, I think there may be hope that Song of the South might yet get the home video release it deserves soon. Because, a few days ago, I discovered that in July 2017, after being, well, inaugurated as a Disney legend, Whoopi Goldberg expressed a desire for Song of the South to be re-released publicly in America. If this is true then I would like to say thank you, Whoopi, for making this possible. What's interesting is that this film takes place in the southern U.S. during the Reconstruction Era, a period of American history shortly after the end of the American Civil War and the abol well, abolishment of American slavery. Plus, I do like the setting in the movie. I mean... The plantation looks very peaceful, with all the nature and backwoods shade. Now let's talk about the animated segments. Now, they were directed by Wilfred Jackson, and in my opinion, these segments, starring Br'er Rabbit, are the best parts of the movie. In fact, I think this whole movie would have been a lot better as a fully animated movie, in my opinion anyway. Plus, they almost remind me of the, a few Silly Symphony cartoons that Disney had made during the old days. Plus, these stories serve as nice life lessons for Johnny to learn from. Now here's where we come to the songs. Nearly all the vocal performances are by the largely African American cast and the renowned all-black Hall Johnson Choir, who sing four pieces. They sing two versions of a blues number, like Let the Rain Pour Down, a one-chain reaction-style folk song, like That's What Uncle Remus Said, and a one spiritual song called All I Want. And in my opinion, these songs are very underrated. However, my favorite song in the movie is Zippity Doodah. To me, this song is a catchy classic that I love to sing along with. Plus, the song Zippity Doodah won the 1947 Academy Award for Best Song, which is very wonderful. Another song that I like is How Do You Do, which I was introduced to from the Friend Like Me sing-along video. In my opinion, this is a nice song that you'd like to sing when greeting your friends and neighbors. Also, the funniest part of the song is when Br'er Rabbit accidentally lets one of Br'er Frog's fishes out of his fishing can. Also, there's Everybody's Got a Laughing Place, which is pretty funny, but it's not as good as the previous songs I mentioned. Plus, I think the cover on Splash Mountain is a lot better. Anyway, now let's move on to the cast. Uncle Remus is played by James Basket, whom before this movie voiced a fat crow in Dumbo. Sadly, James died four years after this movie due to diabetes and suffered a heart attack. But, on the positive side, 
On March 20, 1948, Basket received an honorary Academy Award for his performance as Remus, making him the first African-American male actor to win an Academy Award. Now, in my opinion, Remus is the best character in the movie, not only because of his stories that help Johnny, but I love the songs that he sings in the movie. Plus, I like that Remus is a very friendly, big-hearted, helpful, and wise man. Our main character, Johnny, is played by the late Bobby Driscoll, who was in So Dear to My Heart, Melody Time, Treasure Island, and, of course, Peter Pan. To me, Johnny is a very relatable boy, due to his parents living apart throughout the movie, and I really like that Johnny is a kind, caring, and brave boy. Also, since Johnny lives with his grandmother throughout the movie, it almost reminds me of the times when my grandmother, Joanne Preschelt, was looking after me and my sister when I was young. Ginny Favors is played by Luana Patton, who's also been in Melody Time and So Dear My Heart with Bobby Driscoll. But she's also celebrated her birthday in Fun and Fancy Free. And I'm really sad that she's no longer with us anymore as of 1996, thanks to a respiratory failure. Anyway, Ginny is a poor girl who lives with her mean brothers, Joe and Jake, and of course their mom. She has a pet puppy that she gives to Johnny after her brothers threaten to drown it. She's usually barefoot and wears a dress with a blue collar and sleeves apart, but when she's preparing to go to Johnny's birthday party, she wears a white dress fashioned from her mother's wedding dress. In my opinion, like some of the characters Luana played during that time, I think Ginny is very cute, caring, and very good-hearted. Next we have Toby, played by Glenn Leedy. Not much to say about Toby, other than the fact that he lives on the plantation, but on the other hand, Toby does make a decent best friend character in this movie. The rest of the cast include Ruth Warwick as Johnny's mother Sally, Lucille Watson as the grandmother, and Hattie McDaniel as Aunt Tempe. Now let's move on to the voice actors in the movie. First, we have Br'er Rabbit, voiced by Johnny Lee. In my opinion, Br'er Rabbit is a very memorable character in this movie. I also think he's pretty funny at times, and very sneaky. However, the scene where he falls into a sticky tar situation, thanks to Br'er Fox's tar baby, is equally as frustrating as him getting stuck in honey on Splash Mountain. Also, I find it incredible that he survives being thrown into the briar patch. Next we have Br'er Fox, voiced by James Basket. You know, the same guy who plays Uncle Remus. Anyway, Br'er Fox serves as the main antagonist in the Br'er Rabbit segments. To me, this guy is very sly, crafty, cunning, and a tad silly at times, but he can be very sinister. Plus, he almost makes me think of the big bad wolf from the Three Little Pigs. Plus, I can't believe how many times he tries to catch Br'er Rabbit in an attempt to eat him, like using a rope trap, a tar baby, and tries to throw him into the briar patch. Next, we have Br'er Bear, Br'er Fox's sidekick, voiced by Nick Stewart. To me, Br'er Bear isn't as threatening as Br'er Fox. I mean, he is a bit stupid, slow-witted, 
but he is prone to violence when he's being provoked. So you could say there is something to like about him. Rounding up the cast is Br'er Frog, voiced by Roy Glenn, and Mr. Bluebird, whose chirping is provided by former Donald Duck, Clarence Nash. And now let's move on to my final words. Overall, Song of the South is not great in my opinion, but it's not terrible either. Maybe due to the fact that this movie is so old and that I never watched it as a kid, this movie didn't impact me too much. But on the other hand, while this film is very controversial, the acting is classic, as well as songs like Zippity Doodah and How You Do. Also, the animated segments starring Brer Rabbit are really zany, and I do like the interaction between the live action and animation. Also, I do pray that this movie will get the home media release that it deserves someday. And if it does, I hope I can get it on DVD or Blu-ray. As for my final rating, I'll give this movie a 61% out of 100. Well, that's it for today, everyone. Be sure to join me for my next blog, Mustang Power. Oh, and have a zippity doodah day, everyone.